Exactly 20 years ago today, Robert Rodriguez's Spy Kids hit theaters. But does it hold up? Let's talk about it. Now before we continue, as always, I just want to take a quick second to remind you guys to make sure you hit that like button if you like today's video, and if you're new here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button as well for more new movie related content weekly. But without further ado, let's jump into today's film. Spy Kids was written and directed by Robert Rodriguez, and stars Alexa Vega and Daryl Sabera as two siblings whose lives are turned upside down after their parents get kidnapped and they discover they used to be spies. With zero training and nowhere to go, they decide to take matters into their own hands and not only save their parents, but the entire world too. Now, I will never forget when this film first came out. It was quite the phenomenon, especially for, you know, people my age at the time. I was like, I was like eight years old. Uh, but more specifically, I will never forget that Harry Potter would come out later that year in 2001. It came out uh, in November 2001. So ahead of its release, everybody was reading the books, getting really into that lore. So <laughs> at around the time this film came out, everybody kind of knew already that... Uh, when you're 10 years old in, you know, the, the Potterverse, that uh, an owl would come deliver a letter to you and let you know that you're going to be whisked away to Hogwarts to begin your training. Well, most of my peers were hoping that would happen to them. I was different in the way that I was kind of hoping that my parents would just secretly be spies, similar to the characters in this film. Now, obviously, that didn't happen because, you know, I wouldn't be here. Uh, and I'm still kind of disappointed in that, but I was convinced at the time that I was destined to become a spy kid. To my recollection, this was my first Robert Rodriguez film, and uh, he's had me as a fan ever since. Now, uh, this film had such a big impact on me because, you know, up until that point in my life, I had pretty much just been exposed to like, you know, the regular Disney movies, mostly animation. Um, and this was like the first, I mean, uh, probably not the best word to use, but like really gritty kids movie. Uh, not only was the concept great, but the story had a lot of really cool twists and turns. Uh, immediately what comes to mind, like it's like one of the most memorable moments in the film, especially watching it as a kid, I still remember how I reacted to it. Uh, the, the scene where the parents are trying to escape and they're going down this hallway and the hallway collapses underneath them and you find out it's like made up of puzzle pieces or whatever. And I think it's Antonio Panderas' character who tries to jump across, uh, but as he jumps across, more of the floor falls and then he falls flat on his face and you realize that it's an illusion. However, later on in the film, when the kids go through the exact same thing, it kind of lulls you into a false sense of security because you expect the same thing to happen, but instead, one of them falls falls straight through the floor. I always thought it was a really cool bait and switch moment, but I mean, it doesn't even compare to the film's actual major twist, and that's the realization that Floop, who we come to understand to be the absolute villain, is not the absolute villain. In fact, he's being played like a violin by his minion, which turns out to be the actual bad guy. As a kid, you really don't see that stuff coming. And I think that's more than anything why it's stuck with me. But um, what I most remember about this film, interestingly enough, is the credits. This, I think, was the very first time that I was absolutely aware of the credits. Or at least I wanted to be absolutely aware of the credits because I wanted to know who made this. Who did this uh, at the time to me? Well, still kind of awesome film. So I'll never forget seeing his name written, directed, shot, uh, produced, whatever. You know, he does that. Robert Rodriguez does everything by Robert Rodriguez. As far as I can remember, it was the very first film that I saw that made me aware of the fact that there were actually people responsible for the stories that we were going to the movies to see. Now, this isn't my favorite Robert Rodriguez film, believe it or not, uh, as much as I do actually love it, but it's pretty darn close. Now, obviously, there is a lot to love about this film, but the thing that I think I love the most about it is just how unabashedly bizarre it is. In what other family film can you find spies, clones, thumb creatures, a Willy Wonka-esque villain? I mean, so much happens in this film in such a short amount of time, mind you. The film is only 90 minutes long, 
yet Rodriguez does such a good job at making it all feel established. Uh, he does such a good job at making us feel at home in his head that things that should feel strange and that absolutely are feel completely normal. Especially whatever the fuck this is. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this film was its emphasis on family. And uh, ironically enough, the first Fast and Furious film also came out in 2001. However, this film came out first. So technically it won that race by a little more than an inch. And we all know what Dom Toretto says, right? Winning's winning. Now, as I said before, this is a family film, so obviously it would make sense that it covers the theme of family, but the way in which it does it is what I really liked about it. I love how we go from seeing Carmen and Junie, our two spy kids, go from being two mortal enemies to two siblings that genuinely realize how much they need each other. And I love how that's echoed with uh, the relationship between the father, Antonio Banderas' Gregorio, and his a estranged brother, Machete, played by Danny Trejo, <laughs> who's fantastic in this, of course, and very deserving of his own spinoff, which he eventually did get. get. Um, but um, it's just the way in which they do that, I think, can make this film one of the better family films, especially for its time, because of the way that it showed just how important family can be on so many different levels. And speaking of the characters, I think the acting and all the actors across the board are really great. Relative newcomers at the time, Alexa Vega and Daryl Sabera, kill it as Carmen and Junie. And I know they're doing okay now, but I really would have loved their careers to blow up a bit more because it's apparent here that they are stars. Also, Antonio Banderas, Carla Gugino, Danny Trejo, Jim Cummings, Tony Shalhoub, all of these very different actors from all these very different backgrounds come together here to make this very abstract material work. Now, I, I said before that it's Robert Rodriguez who invites us into his head, but it's really these actors and their incredibly uh, enjoyable performances that make us feel comfortable enough to stay. And one more thing about the actors before I forget, and hopefully without sounding too cheesy in regards to representation, this was the first film as a kid that I remember seeing with people like me on the big screen. And once again, I don't want to sound cheesy, but as a kid, a Hispanic kid nonetheless growing up in New York City, that was really something to, to see uh, people speaking the same language that I had only ever heard my parents speak at home. Uh, it was interesting. And, uh, I mean, while I didn't realize it then, it really did mean something. Uh, just, I, I had never had that relatability factor between myself and another character in a movie, like a, that personal relatability factor. Uh, and it's so crazy because the more I talk about it, the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to realize that this film had, uh, you know, other effects and uh, really had a deeper meaning than I originally thought prior to, you know, formulating this video. It, Robert Rodriguez actually turned out to be a much greater influence than I, I could ever imagine. Now, is Spy Kids perfect? No. In hindsight, Revisiting this film for this review, I realized that there are a lot of things I may have overlooked as a child, particularly the pacing. I mentioned earlier that the film is told within this neat little 90 minute window, but even within that window, there are a few scenes and sequences that escalate oddly. And I know that that quick escalation is one of Robert Rodriguez's calling cards and it works really well in some of his other films, but here it feels really out of place. The climax, if you can even call it that, is probably the best example, too. Uh, there's no resolution with our bad guys. Instead, we just see a bunch of children charge at them and then throw them up in the air. In the air don't put me down! Overall, though, 20 years later, Robert Rodriguez's Spy Kids is more than just a footnote in his already distinguished career. It's a fun film that still manages to entertain and appeal to kids of all ages. And despite my personal connection to it, I think that qualifies it as a classic. And for that, I'm going to give this film four stars. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to view this video. It really does mean the world to me. And once again, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button as well for more new movie related content weekly. Now, if you want to see more reviews like this, and honestly, I had a lot of fun recording it, so I hope to do more in the future anyway, let me know what you thought about it down below in the comment section. Also, if you happen to see Spy Kids, which I'm assuming most of you probably have by this point in your life, let me know what you thought about it. 
I look forward to reading and responding to all of your comments down below. But once again, that's pretty much all the time that I have for you guys today. And uh, uh, be on the lookout for more new content shortly. In the meantime, I should just probably get back to work, right? Until next time, I'm Nemsi Pallad. Take care.